Hello, hello, hello Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome to the How To Series in Basic Jewelry Making. My name is Joanne Francis. I'm a tutor under the Handicraft Development Program with the Ministry of Sport and Community Development. Today, we will be making a simple earring and bracelet set. Something that you can make for yourself or as a gift for the season. And this is what we will be making. A lovely bracelet and earring to match. This is stretch and we will, you know, get to know how to go about doing it. For those who have never done anything like this before or for those who have done it, well, let's do it again. Pretend that you're in a class. And so, let's get started. Of course, first, we must get the materials going. So, we will use a pair of 12 millimeters beads, 8 millimeter beads, 2 pairs of head pin, and let me see if I can bring this closer for the, for the camera to see. A spacer, or should I say spacers, rhinestone spacers, flat spacers, and you will see why we need that. Jump rings, we have two, and we have an extra one. I will show you what to do and what not to do with it. And of course, an uh, earring can be an earring without our earring hook. To get these happening, we must have our tools. And this is a round nose pliers. We have our chain nose pliers. We have our flush cutter. And we have our chain nose pliers, which I need to talk to you all about. You notice it's flat on the inside. We have our flush cutter again. And if you all are hearing in the distance, we have water, water. Come and get it. So that means I am home observing the stay home ruling. And this is why I'm speaking to you all today. So... I am home doing this for you all and for the ministry. So let us get started making our earring hooks. Huh? I suppose some of you all are home or you all will look at it after. So the first thing I'm going to do is to pick up my head pin. My flat. Oh, I should. Let me show you why I need that. Oops. There it goes. So it tells me that my hole is big and I will use these flat spacers here to prevent my head pin from going right through so you see it and this is how it will look spacer my rhinestone spacer and my eight millimeter so this is us here Now, I'm going to put my, the end of my ball pin, or even if I was using a, a, a flat head pin, I would put it against my ring finger, hold it down with my thumb, and have it resting on my index finger. And I am going to use my flush cutter, where I'm going to cut as close to the edge of my index finger as possible. So let us get it. And I take my wrong nose pliers and I curl away from me. When I do that, it would tend to look like a hockey stick. So to get it a little rounder, I just give it a little flick back towards me. And here I am. I 
I have my wrong nose pliers in one hand and my jump ring in the other hand. And I want to show you all something. Most people, even when they're fixing the little chain at home, tend to do this poor jump ring, this. And then they, they try to close it back. And when they're closing it back, it's no longer round. It is no longer round. It oval. It, it all how. Right? But we want a nice round jump ring. So here we are. And this is how you do it. You, I'm using my wrong nose and my chain nose and I'm opening. You notice how I do it? A little flick. Insert it in the loop. And through the other loop of my earring hook. And I close it back the same way I opened it. Oops, sorry. You must hear a, a, a little click. Right. So, one side is done. So, let's do the other side. Oops, again. So, we use our flat spacer. We use our 12 millimeter. We use our rhinestone. And we use our 8 millimeter. And we have it. And let's go again. Press on the ring, ring finger. Hold down with the thumb and the index finger. And use the. And remember, we are curling away from us. Bring it back so we don't get our hockey stick. Get our jump ring. Our next earring hook. Close it back. Right, we heard the click. And there we are. Let's clear this and look at it. And this is our pair of earrings. So, let's go through the material for our bracelet. We will need stretchy cord. I don't know if the camera can pick this up. Stretchy cord, it's clear. We would need our beads, our eight millimeter beads to match our pair of earrings, our rhinestone spacer to match what we had in our earring, our bead stopper, a scissors, a pair of scissors. And this here is our fairy that we would attach and our jump ring to attach it with. And of course, our measuring tape. Now I use a builder's tape because I can lock it at whatever length I want with, you know. And one thing before we continue, I would like to say is that there are standards where bracelets are concerned. So you have six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half inches. Those are the standard bracelet lengths. But of course we have people with very small hands. So the best thing to do is to measure your hand and whether big or small. Then we also have to take into consideration the different size of beads that we use. I am using an 8 millimeter. Maybe if I was using more, I wouldn't have to use all these. A bigger size, I wouldn't have to use all these beads. So, let us begin. 
I am aiming for a six and a half, seven inches. So I am going to cut it a comfortable 12 inch length. And I'm going to stretch it. Now, pre-stretch. Your stretchy cord lasts longer when you do this. Right. Stretch a nice. Right. I am going to place my bead stopper at the end of my stretchy cord so this is it here dangling for you all to see it on and I am going to start threading my beads now I am going to use a slight pattern right if you're using um, multicolors you could randomly put them on but I am making a little design so I am going with five and then spacers and of course as I said, spacers, this is another spacer, but I am using it as a knot spacer so that when I finish my bracelet, you won't be seeing the knot. It will be professionally done. So I thread on one, two, three. four, five, and I place my rhinestone spacer. So, oops, there it is with five on. I go again. One, two, three, Four, five, and I place my spacer. I want to form a little pattern, so I put my spacer, a bead, a spacer, like that, and then I go again one. There we go, there we go, there we go. Two. Three. Four. And I put a spacer again. A bead. A spacer. So it, it picks up the pattern here. So we're going to repeat the other part. One, two, three, four, five, spacer. And the last set, one, Two, three, four, five. Right. So there I have it. Now I'm going to put on my spacer for my knot. And I'm going to give it a little stretch again. I'm going to take off my bead stopper. And I'm going to tie a knot. Just an ordinary knot. First part. And then I'm going to tie what they call a surgical knot. So I'm told one, two. We're going to tie another knot again. One, one, two. 
And that should do it there. We snip it off. And we hide it inside Mr. Nutter. Here. Just like that. We get our chain nose pliers and round nose pliers. You notice these are the tools. I call them my left hand and right hand. And I open my jump ring. I put on my little fairy here. I put her into the loop. She's running away from me. Good. And I close back my jump ring. Making sure to hear that click. The ends are together. I know it's not going to fall off. And there I have. Now you see. I did not close my jump ring properly just now. And that is why this happened. This is something we must always be careful about. Our jump rings opening up. All right. Have to be very careful about that. It is still open from what I am seeing. All right. So let me get my pliers here and hear that click. The, that means the ends won't rub together. Ah, now hear that. Now hear that click. Sometimes, you know, you give it a little squeeze. Right, now we're good. So we now have our pair of earrings and our bracelet. So this is what I showed you all before. And this is what we have now. So we have our red and we have our green. I must say thanks to the ministry for allowing me to do this how-to series. And to the other tutors who are doing it. We miss you all very much. We like doing our classes. I have been doing it for many years. And I hope as long as I have health and strength to continue... But we can only get back the classes next year if we help by wearing our mask, washing our hands, and sanitizing to keep this COVID away so we can all be together in the same space, learning and sharing with one another. Thank you again, and thanks for the ministry for allowing it.